remastering fabric using Maya, Marvelous and ZBrush. Hi, in this tutorial I will show you how we remaster the fabrics to go from something like this to something like this. And we'll do this by taking one specific piece and recreating all the steps from beginning to end. This includes starting in Maya, moving to Marvelous Designer and then ZBrush for Final Polish and then doing final renders in Maya. The old method. Here you can see the old model. Here we used N-Cloth to have a cloth simulation that actually moves along with the rig. And this works quite well. I even used it on my Knight with a lot more higher fidelity. But as you can see, it's not very interactive. So for this character, I wanted to try a new approach, which was simulating it in Marvelous Designer. This means the end result will just be a static pose but it will be of a much higher fidelity than what we see here and will also be much more interactive when we're actually working with the material, trying to shape it nicely. The new method, step by step. Here you see the final remastered model and today's exercise is to remake the piece we see right here selected from scratch so you can follow along the full process on how we created this in Marvelous Designer and ZBrush. So first we'll get rid of the old flap and the tie pad. And then we'll unhide the original sim mesh that got used for the end cloth simulation. Now the next step is to put the flap into the correct position of the pose. So this happens sometimes when there's rigged objects, your selection will select the rigging object. So for that, what I'd like to do is just go to view and just hide everything except polygons. That means you can still have your objects rigged, uh, but it won't select anything. Then we put the pivot at the top and kind of just rotate it into place. Making sure it's as tight to the body as possible with minimal intersection. That little bit there we can easily fix in Marvelous Designer. Now we want to make an avatar that we can use in Marvelous Designer. This will be the object that will have the collision. For the best possible performance, it's best to make the avatar and the sim mesh as low poly as possible. So you can see I'm only selecting the objects that will actually interact with this particular flap. Now I'm just going to export this, make a new folder just for this test case. And save it as avatar. Next up, we want to export the sim mesh. And for this first, we're going to make a little backup copy because we want to have extra resolution for this sim mesh. So we're just going to go and smooth this mesh. And what's very important here is that we turn off any smooth UVing because we'll use the UVs later to transfer the output of Marvelous Designer back onto the original mesh here in Maya. And with that done, we're just going to export this as sim mesh. Now let's open up Marvelous Designer. And the first thing we're going to do now is import our avatar.obj file as an avatar. I'm going to simply add it to the file. And then we'll import the sim mesh as obj to garment. And first thing we want to do is you want to pin the top, otherwise it's just going to slide right off the leg. So for this, I'd like to use the lasso and then just mark the border and the orange will show it as pinned. Then before we go into the actual simulation, I'd like to go to the settings and set it to GPU. 
this is something added to the newer version of Marvelous Designer and makes it a lot faster and more interactive to simulate. So then we just sim the mesh and as we can see, this looks quite realistic but a little bit boring. So we're going to start moving the fabric around to make it more like what we would like to be, something more artistically pleasing. And this is really the benefit of this workflow over my previous workflow that just used Encloth because it's way more interactive. You can see I can just play around with it and also uh, quickly fix mistakes if things start to intersect, etc. Now I want to go back to Maya and I want to export the type pad. So let's first unhide the type pad we've just been hiding. And let's export this one to OBJ. Then here we'll import also as an avatar and we make sure we add it and not replace the original avatar. And then we just hit the sim again to make sure that the simulation actually stays underneath the type pad. And then here I'll see if I can nudge it under a little bit more, get a little bit more interaction with the fabric and the armor. Giving it a good spin from all the angles, making sure I'm happy with it. I feel the front can use the same idea, a little bit more interaction with the tight pad and uh, the fabric itself. Okay, and now we are going to export our result as an OBJ to Maya. I'm just gonna call this export one. And we just wanna export the garment, not the avatars. And then here we'll import. And you can see there's a few problems. First of all, the normals are super wacky. And then if you look closely, the new mesh is also triangulated. But the magic is they have exactly the same UVs. So that means we can use transfer attributes with the following settings. We want to, make, we want to transfer the vertex positions via UV space. So we select the marvelous output and then our quoted mesh. And then we just hit apply. Hmm, this is a bit unexpected. Let's try again. Okay, so this can sometimes happen when the meshes have transformed somewhere. And since this original Encloth mesh is somewhere parent to the rig, it's highly likely there's a transform somewhere. So the easiest thing to do is just export the geometry to OBJ and import it back in. And luckily we already did that before. That's the sim mesh we sent to Marvelous Designer. And when we run the same process, then it will work perfectly. And now we are going to move over to ZBrush and use its sculpting tools to touch up the simulation that Marvelous gave us. So let's open ZBrush. And here we want to import the avatar and then append the subtool, import our mesh. And now we want to fix all the artifacts left by Marvelous. You can see where it's kind of squeezed in between the tie pad and the, the skin. The simulation doesn't know what to do, so it kind of generates this kind of noisy effect. So with the smooth brush, it's very easily fixed. I just did a mask by features to make sure the edges are protected because those are something I don't want to go in. And then for areas like this and for cloth in general, smooth directional is one of my favorite brushes. So I'm going into here the palette. You can see I have a favorite already for it, but for this tutorial, I just pick it from the spot where everybody will be able to find it. And now I changed the default from smooth to smooth directional. 
So then with a combination of smooth directional and inflate, I'll be able to fix that area right up. You can see there's also just a little bit of general artifacting. So just doing a light smooth in the direction of the folds immediately fixed all of that. Then I'm just going to add a sculpt layer and just kind of sculpt in a little bit more of the folds that I would like to see. I feel the bottom is a little bit plain looking. It can be quite rough because we're planning to do a second pass in Marvelous Designer later. Then I'm just using the move brush to make sure the pattern looks natural, nudging it along. Making sure everything makes sense. Also at this point, I'm having a hard time judging the mesh because it's not double sided. So you can go to your display properties and click on double to make sure your mesh displays double sided. Then we have a little artifact here. So before deciding if you want to fix that, let's import the type pad to make sure to see if it's actually a problem. Yep, it's a little bit visible. Okay, let's move it around a little bit to show some intersection between the type pad. Hmm. This is definitely something we need to fix. So easiest way to fix this is just come in with a small brush and kind of move the verts out. It's really hard to select. So the first thing I want to do is just making sure the verts are on the right side of the mesh. It's quite precision work. And then I can use uh, my selection tools to hide that last part. So it can work very isolated to just have this fixed. There we go, making sure it looks good from all sides. And I'm pretty happy with that. So a few small tweaks. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Just enhancing some folds. Enhancing some of the details that are underneath the fabric that are kind of pushing through a bit. Then I'm using a big move brush. And what I'm trying to do here is around the bottom, I'm trying to make the fabric a little bit wider. So when Marvelous Designer then does the sim, it actually has more fabric to simulate. So it will create a little bit more intense creases. What also is nice to do is add one extra subdivision level, just so we have some extra definition in our simulation. And with that, we're just gonna export this to SimMesh2 and import this back into Marvelous Designer. Same settings as before. And then we just sim it. And you can see the differences are not that big. So in a way it's more similar how you sculpt with subdivision levels. You do the broad simulation first on the lower res mesh and then you come in to do the more fine stuff once you subdivide it a few times. And again, trying to reinforce the idea as we had before, like more interaction with the armor piece, the type pad.
just inspecting the model from all angles. And then once we're happy with that, we just export OBJ. And again, we just want to export the garment. And remember, as soon as we do it in Marvelous Designer, the mesh will come out all triangulated. So we'll have to repeat the process and make this a quad mesh again. And we do that by importing the mesh that we sent to ZBrush, which had the quads, and then import the Marvelous output. So then we'll select those two and hit transfer. And then we'll export this selection back to ZBrush. And this mesh will have exactly the same vertex ID, so we can just import it as a layer. And here you can see what the sim did. Definitely looks a lot better. So let's see that point is looking a little bit awkward. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to hide even just like this. So then we'll just have to come and fix it using the same techniques as before. Also using smooth directional here to fix all the wrinkles. You can see a little bit of a gridding pattern on it. And then inflate to kind of fix that fold. Just sculpting in some final wrinkles. Just giving it a good spin, making sure it looks nice. And then once we're happy with it, we just export it to go back to Maya. And here we're just going to import our mesh. Then the first thing we'll notice it has hard normals. So we will come in and we'll soften the normals. Let's also hide the layer with the original sim meshes so we can compare our result of this tutorial to the established sims. It's looking pretty good. So next step now is to add some thickness and we do this by doing an extrude. And then just to stay consistent with the other garments, it's 0 0.1. And then this is personal taste, but I also like to give a smooth edge on this, just so from the distance, the edge will pick up a slightly nicer highlight. Then we notice this material is very white compared to the other, so we need to apply the same material on it. So for this we just go to the hypershade and we assign it. That looks more consistent. And now it's time to delete all the junk. I don't know how that head got in there. <laughs> um, and we can do a quick test render to make sure everything looks fine. Just giving it a final good inspection, making sure I'm happy with everything. So 
So we're just bringing back all the previously hidden geometry types because the background, for example, is NURBS and we have lights that were hidden before. So then we just hit render, see how it looks. The nice part about Arnold is that it has interactive rendering in the viewport. It's very similar to Keyshot where it just kind of resolves over time. As you can see, it's a little bit noisy, but if you hold the camera still, it starts refining the image. So we'll just pick a nice angle and then we'll just kind of let it resolve for a while, see how it looks. I'll speed this part up a little bit so we don't have to wait to see a render resolve. And I'm quite happy with this. So with that, we can reach the end of the tutorial where you can see completely all the steps, how we got from a very low res sim mesh to the final render mesh that we used in the final product. And then here you can see the final render, how it turned out. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. If you want to see more tutorials like this, feel free to check out my YouTube page where I have a few more based on my previous project, The Night.